I'm going to be showing you guys today how to make something super cool like this. So, this is just a demonstration of what you'll be learning throughout the video. So make sure to stick around to the end because you learn tons of cool stuff. Hey guys, so I'm going to be showing you how to actually use the sine and cosine functions in Roblox Studio. A more practical way of using it. So, as you can see, I have an image up on my screen right now. This is called the unit circle. Now don't psych yourself out too much looking at this because it does take a while to get used to and get to know it. But you only need to know kind of one key feature of this, right? And that's that it's a circle. So how do we actually navigate around the circle? I'll be actually going to Roblox Studio soon and showing you how we can make the circle in a game. So we'll have an object basically just spinning in circles and doing cool things. So. As you can see, it says 30 degrees here, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, all that fun stuff. So that's with our normal Cartesian coordinate, right? So when we're trying to find the degree of an angle, we usually just say 30 degrees. But with the unit circle, we're going to be converting that to radians. So that's why we use the math.rad function in Roblox Studio. So that means math.radians. So we're going to be translating 30 degrees to radians, which will equal pi over 6. And that is this little 30 degree angle right here. So, as you can guess, I'm just going to have like a while loop counting up in degrees. So like 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree. And it's just going to be navigating around the circle. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So, again, if I do cosine of 45 degrees, Cosine is always represented by the x coordinate up here. So if I do cosine of 45 degrees, that's going to show me square root of 2 over 2. If I do cosine of 120 degrees, radians of course, negative 1 over 2. If, similarly, if I do cosine of 2 pi over 3, that's also going to give me negative 1 over 2. So we're not actually going to be writing in 2 pi over 3. We're just going to be using the degrees, converting that to radians and it's going to give us these coordinates. So now if I have both the cosine and sine coordinate, it will just give me this exact angle in the unit circle. As you can also see, if I do sine of 2 pi over 3, it's going to give me square root of 3 over 2. If I do cosine of 135 degrees, it will give me square root of 2 over 2. If I do sine of 135 degrees, it will give me this y coordinate, square root of 2 over 2. So I'm going to hop into Roblox Studio now, and I'm going to show you some cool stuff we could do with this. So now I'm back in Roblox Studio, right? And now you see I have a little object spinning in circles. I'm only able to do this because of the unit circle, right? If I didn't have the unit circle to work with, it would be very hard just to trace a circle like this. And I can actually do so many more cool things with this than just trace a circle. Like I could have it go in a spiral. And this is all thanks to like vectors and stuff and just like physics in general because it allows us to um, kind of simulate like a spiral. It's really cool. I'll show you. So as you can probably guess, I just have a while loop running infinitely, just a while true loop. And it is basically just saying while true degrees plus or equals one. So I just have a degree counter and that's increasing by one every time the while loop, while loop increments. So now it's just going through the circle infinitely, converting a degree to a radian. So I'm going to actually type out the script. So um, you guys can follow along with that. Here we go. So I'm going to create a part over here. And I'm just going to name this part um, moving part 2. You guys can name this moving part or just moving if you want. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what you have it named. But um, I'm just going to name it, name it moving part 2 for now. So now what I want to do is anchor this so it doesn't fall over and stuff like that. We don't want that. And I'm going to go into my, click this little plus sign in the Explorer, type in script. And now, here we go. We got the basic print hello world here. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to just get the part that I want to move. Script up here. That redirects me to my part up here. And now I'm going to also um, define the run service. So 
Actually, let me type this out fully. If you don't know what run ser uh, <clears throat> sorry, what run service is, it allows you to actually um, oops, not AB test service. It allows you to. I don't know why I can't type right now. Get the render stepped heartbeat, all that stuff. I want to use heartbeat, which will take place of just a wait. I don't want to use wait. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So if I do while run service, and then I could just do oops run service dot heartbeat wait. This will wait one heartbeat on the server. I'm not going to fully explain what a heartbeat is, but it is very fast. I'll tell you that. So instead of using a wait, I'm going to use this because it will run a lot more smooth if I do it this way. So another thing I want to do is I'm going to initialize a degree variable. I'll set that to zero right now. And every time this loop goes through this loop, I'm just going to have it increment the degrees by one. So it's just going to keep going, keep incrementing this infinitely almost. That's not going to matter because on the unit circle, it's always going to go back to zero once it hits 360. You won't see that though. So I'm going to now type in local x. So this is going to be my x coordinate for my circle. So it will just be moving. If I look at my position vector down here, there it is. I'm going to have this x position right here. It's going to be moving kind of over while the sign will make it go up and stuff. It's, it's weird. You'll see what I mean in a second though. So if I do local x equals math dot cosine, just like I said, the x, the x vector will have the math dot cosine function running because we're grabbing that x coordinate. So now once we have that, we're going to convert to radians, the degrees. So again, if you're still a little confused, you could rewind the video, go back to the beginning and see what I was talking about with grabbing the X coordinate from the unit circle. So this is just going to make it so it moves horizontally. And now I'm going to initialize a Y vector math dot cosine. Sorry, this one's going to be sine. And then we'll convert this to um, degrees. So now we have the circular motion going. And finally, we're just going to have it a Z1. That's just going to be constant. We don't want that changing. So now all we have to do is do part dot position equals vector 3 dot new x comma y comma z. Because we already have these all defined. So now if I run this, let's see if everything works. Ready? It actually might move over here, so let's just see what happens. So I run my game, it comes over here. As you can see, it is actually moving in a circle. <laughs> it's not moving very, um, like a large gap. So we're going to change that real quick. So I'm going to make it so it moves on a wider, just it's going to have um, a wider radius. It's not going to be so tight. So to make it have a wider radius, all we have to do is multiply a number by this. So this will um, kind of expand it out. So we can see the change immediately. Just like this. So now it's a larger circle. It's going under the base plate though. I'm going to actually fix that real quick too. So just to um, kind of offset this, I'm going to say plus 11. This will just offset the Y position up 11, so we don't have to worry about it going through the base plate. So as you can see now, it's not going through the base plate, and it's moving in a circular motion, just like the unit circle. Again, I don't fully expect you to understand the unit circle unless you have a lots of experience. All you have to know is that cosine will move along the X position, and sine always grabs the Y position. So again, if you want, if you're curious about the unit circle, stuff like that, that's all trigonometry. That's mostly trigonometry, yeah. So once you get into your pre-calc courses in high school or calculus, you do so much of the unit circle, it's ridiculous. Like you'll have that thing memorized. Like I have the, I could list out the whole unit circle so easily. So just to um, make this a bit easier to see, 
I'm going to give this a white color and I will make it neon. So now that we have this neon, I'm also going to scale this down like we did the previous part. I'm just going to add a trail to it. Trail, attachment one, attachment two. Because a trail needs two attachments, remember that? So I'm just going to move these attachments so they fit this a little bit better. And now I'm going to attach, make these attachments like that. So I'm going to also change up the trail so it just, you can see it better. It's going to emit one light. And I'm going to change the color of it. Actually, I'll leave it. I'll have it like end off grayish so we could see it moving in the circular motion better. There we go. So let's see what happens now. It shouldn't look too much different. It really should just like add a nice cool effect to it. Ooh, went all the way over there. Look at that. It kind of looks like, a, if you think about it, it looks like a nice little loading screen. And we could also change the lifetime of this. We could change the lifetime to like 10 seconds and it will stick around for longer. I'm also going to make it so it faces the camera. There we go. So let's see what this does. <laughs> it keeps going over here. So check that out. As you can see, it kind of um traces the outline in the circle. It's super cool. It looks like a little loading screen. So one more thing I want to do before I end off this video is a very quick tutorial. So um I ex like if you guys really want to understand cosine, sine, all that stuff, you're gonna have to do a little bit more research on your own because that would take a lot more time. So um, I'm just showing you the effects it can have in Roblox Studio. Uh, one more thing I want to do is I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to make it move a bit faster. If you want the circle moving faster, you can actually just change the degrees so it's just spiraling faster. And um, you can actually make this Z coordinate. You can make this go by degree divided by 10. So this will just make it so it's moving along the z-axis and not a constant number. But now it's moving, as you can see, it's moving in a spiral. So you can actually use this, like I might have a tutorial in the future, making an attack using the math and cosine functions like this. So if you guys like this video, you know, please like, please subscribe. You can tell me what I was doing right or wrong. I know I kind of explained it rather quickly, but... um. I haven't made a video in like two weeks because I've been super busy with school. That's how it is. So um, I hope you guys can like understand that. But um, yeah, you guys can always play around with these numbers. You can also um, make this a really huge circle just by um, doing that. You can even make it look like an ellipse <laughs> if you change one of the numbers to be different. Like look at that circle, oh my gosh. Now it's spiraling like a that looks super cool. Let's actually, let me test something real quick. So if I do this, I think this should make it look like an uh, ellipse almost. Oops, let me get rid of the, um. let me make this constant again. And let me make this a bit smaller. So, yeah, it's moving like, um, kind of looks like a football now. It's an ellipse instead of a circle. So yeah, you can do a ton of cool stuff, basically whatever you want. You can do it. So um, I really appreciate you guys. Um, thanks for watching and have a great day.